I'm gonna start off with three questions. So the first question I have for you guys is, how many of you have been to Brussels? Okay, so most of you are paying attention, that's great. Second question is, how many of you have been to Africa? Okay, that's a lot of people. How many of you have been to space? Somebody once very famously said that we are the middle children of history. We were born too late to explore the Earth and born too early to explore the stars. But I tend to disagree. I played a virtual reality app once called Titans of Space. And I don't have the memory of playing an app. I actually have a memory of floating among the stars and around the sun in our solar system. Because objects in virtual reality, they feel solid, they have mass, and they feel like they are real. And that is the power of virtual reality. Some of you probably don't believe me, so check out five times world snooker champion Ronnie O'Sullivan playing a virtual game of pool and falling over because he thought that the table in front of him was solid. And because virtual reality is an experience that is so powerful, I truly believe that virtual reality will change people's lives. So, hi, my name is Dominic Escoffier, and virtual reality literally changed my life. Five years ago, I tried an early prototype of the Oculus Rift, one of the VR headsets out there on the market. And it was literally a piece of tech held together with duct tape. This is actually a more advanced version of that kit. And ever since that experience, I did everything I could to make virtual reality a thing. I helped start one of the largest unofficial communities on the internet for virtual reality. Together with experts from, from other countries, I started a non-profit organization called EUVR to push the envelope for European virtual reality developers. And I also co-founded a virtual reality startup called realities.io, which we brought through an accelerator in Silicon Valley. So in short, I'm a huge virtual reality enthusiast. And right now, I'm working at NVIDIA, heading up their European virtual reality business. And working for a company like that is really great because it's one of those companies that is pushing virtual reality because, just as I do, NVIDIA believes that it's going to be the next computing platform. And I actually go a step further. I believe that virtual reality will create a better humankind. And I'm going to tell you why. First of all, it will prepare you better for your future. Second, it will make you more healthy. And third, virtual reality will make you smarter. So let's dive right into that first topic. This is my brother, my sister-in-law, and my two nephews. There's a third child also depicted on this picture that's arriving soon. They bought a house from the 60s, and they are renovating it right now. And after a long day of helping them to renovate their house, I talked to my sister-in-law and told her, the, the house is really great. You have an amazing garden, and once you have that addition to your house, it's going to look amazing. But she only said, that for her, it's hard to imagine what it's going to look like just by seeing a 2D blueprint. And I agreed, but virtual reality actually offers a solution for that. She can be prepared for the house that she will be living in for the next years, maybe for the rest of her life. So what I did is, I took the old house, I built a model in SketchUp, and then I ran it through Iris VR, which is an app that takes your SketchUp drawing and actually puts it into 3D. So she was able to walk inside her house, check out whether the guest toilet, for example, is big enough. She was able to go into the living room and see her future living room for the first time in her life. And you can, in VR, you can do even crazy things, like change the setting of the sun so you can see how light is coming into your room. So if you want to see early in the morning what the dining room is, is going to look like, you have the ability in virtual reality. But that's only one part how virtual reality will prepare you for your future. It can actually help you fight your fears. But before I tell you about that, take a look at the reaction from my sister-in-law. She almost had tears in her eyes because she could see for the first time the house that she'd be living in.
So again, let's go to the, to the fear part. Many people have phobias out there in the world. Actually, phobias are widely distributed. So 10 to 25% of the population suffer from phobias. If you take things like fear of public speaking into account, the numbers go as high as 73%. And virtual reality can help f combat those fears with something called exposure therapy. Exposure therapy is something where you go to a doctor and in a safe environment you get gradu gradually exposed to your fears. And the cool thing is that virtual reality therapy is just as effective. And I'm actually living proof for that. I cured my own fear of heights with virtual reality. And what's even cooler is that you can do that at half the cost. So instead of going to a doctor that puts a glass of spiders in front of you in a safe environment, you can do the same thing in virtual reality. Because those, those spiders, they feel very real. And just by the push of a button, the spiders take up more of your space, more of your room, until they're everywhere. And this is how virtual reality will prepare you better for your future. It will give you a glimpse into the house you might be living in and will take away your fears. But it will also make you healthier. Let me tell you the story of José Luis Mosso Vázquez. He's a researcher and general surgeon at the Universidad Panamericana. And what he does is he jumps into his Jeep and drives up to remote mountain towns where there are no clinics available. And he uses virtual reality to distract his patients and take a little bit of their fear and their anxiety away from them. So instead of seeing the surgery actually done, people can roam around in an underwater seascape, they can roam around the, uh, the, the ruins of Machu Picchu just so they get distracted a little bit from their pains and from their anxiety. And what Jose found is that patients using virtual reality reported 24% less pain and anxiety. And Jose estimates that by using less sedatives, they can cut the cost of general surgeries by up to one quarter. But VR can do much more it can actually help paraplegics walk again. This is how it's done. Virtual reality can help these people. And what's the best thing about this is, this is the first time that is, that is written down where a study found that 100% of the patients that took part in this, in this program, 100% of them were reclassified from quadriplegic to just being paralyzed which is something very important for them. Not only can they move their legs, they get things back like bowel, and bowel control, so they can do their daily routine just like a normal person can. So that's the health part. But virtual reality will make all of you smarter, I promise. Because in virtual reality, you learn better. You perform better when learning with virtual reality. In, in China, there was a recent study released that showed Two groups, of, two groups of students were trained. One of them was without virtual reality, and the other group was, was, tra was trained and, and they learned with virtual reality. And if you take a test right after the lesson, the students perform 27% better. The cool thing is, if you take that same test two weeks later, then they perform 32% better than the non-VR group, which shows that you not only learn faster in VR, you actually retain that knowledge for a longer time. Because again, things feel solid in VR. They feel real, they are all around you, and humans learn best when done in a spatial way. And what's even cooler than that, 
is 100% positive reception among students, so they love it. Education, and I think many of you will agree, is the most powerful weapon. It's really the key in a lot of, in a lot of um, fields out there. And one of the things where I think it will have a huge implication, so this learning advantage that you have, is developing countries. Take Africa, for example. Many people in Africa don't have access to computers, but many of them have access to smartphones. So you can do a thing called mobile virtual reality, where you use your smartphone, plug that in, and then people can learn better. And this might actually help to shrink the gap between the Western civilizations where the school systems are way more rigid, where it's way harder to get tech into the classrooms. So this is a huge chance to actually make humankind better. But now let me show you something else. To wrap this up, this is how I learned about the human body 25 years ago. This is a cartoon series from France. It's called Once Upon a Time Life, and it allows the people to see the insides of the human body. And when I was a kid, I dreamt of being inside of one of these pots and actually journey inside of the human body. And some of you might have guessed it, this is now possible with virtual reality. So what I'm going to do now is show you how, the, how students will learn in the future. And what you see here is a mixed reality demo. So we aligned the camera up here with the virtual camera and then composited me myself inside of this. And I am standing in a vein. I am in one of these pots. My childhood dream has more or less come true. And what I can do now is I can even blow up blood cells and shoot them down the vein. There's a voice overlay that, uh, that tells you about the inner workings of the human body. And this is the really cool thing about VR. I don't have a feeling of playing an app. I actually have a feeling of being inside the human body. And that is something that only virtual reality can do. This is my three-year-old nephew. He's one of those middle children of history. But I would argue that he was born at the exact right time. He was born at the right time to explore the Earth, to explore the stars, and even take a journey into the human body. And all that by the power of virtual reality. Thank you very much.